What's up guys, it's Ben. Now you may recognize me from some other cornhole related videos out there right now, but I've decided to start something new. I've decided to start testing different types of products for cornhole, but judging them from an objective scientific standpoint. Now one of the first things that players want to know about regarding the science of cornhole is the bags. Now there's a lot of different manufacturers for bags out there right now and a lot of these bag manufacturers have their own scales for speed, their own scales for the flexibility of the bags, and maybe even some other things. But something that nobody's really ever done before is get all the bags together and test them on some sort of objective scale against each other to show how they compare and contrast against each other. So you're about to find out what happens when you put cornhole bags to the test with science. Now, when it comes to testing the bags, there are several different categories of characteristics that we wanted to focus in on. We wanted to focus on the fabric speed of the bags, the fill that's used inside the bags, and the flexibility of the bags. Those seem to be the most common and most sought after things to think about when purchasing a bag or what you're gonna play with or throw with in an upcoming event. So for the speeds of the fabrics used in each different type of bag, we had to come up with some sort of objective method that would test the speeds of the fabric consistently every single time. So here's what we did. All right, so we are at Five Tool, which is a sports complex that's indoors in Carrollton, Georgia, not too far away from where we manufacture cornhole stuff. And on this first test that you see behind me, we are testing the speeds of the different fabrics that bags are made with on this really cool ramp. So how it works, is we take a bag, hold it in the same corner every time, and put it up at the top of the ramp and let it slide down without any force, any assistance, just let gravity do all the work. And the bag fabric will slide to a particular number on our scale. And we will drop that bag on that same side with the same fabric for five times and take measurements for each place that the bag lands. From the fifth time that the bag lands, we will take the averages of all those five drops, and that will be the rating for that particular side of that fabric. Now, going into the experiment, we don't necessarily know what side of the bag is gonna be faster or slower, so we're not really even going to say things such as, this is the fast side of the bag or the slow side of the bag. We're just dropping it and testing it and letting all the data tell us what is happening here. So, with no further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so as an example, we're about to drop the Game Changer Steady on the side with the patch. And what we'll do is we'll hold it in that same spot on the bag every time, drop it on that side five times in a row, and then record each drop just like this. Go ahead and drop it down, Brandon. So this came out to be a 4.7. And how we're determining what the number is, we're measuring from where the very middle of the bag stops on the chart. So that would be recorded as a 4.7. That is a 4.8. Look at that. That's a 5.3. Five point three and a five point five. So we would then take the averages of all of those numbers and that would determine what the patch side of the steady's speed rating is. Now one of the most interesting things that we found out during this process is that there are a lot of different bags that have the same fabric on one side of them and they don't always come out to the same speeds. Now how in the world is that possible? 
Well, we determined that the speed on that bag is also affected by the shape of the bag. So how much friction is involved with the surface area of the bag on the ramp. And then also what's inside the bag, what's filling it. So there may be some similar fabrics or exactly the same fabrics that are being used on different bags, but if they have different fabrics on the other side of the bag or are filled with something different, it is going to cause a different reaction to the slide of the bag. I also went into this experiment having some presuppositions about how certain bags would compare, and it wasn't always the case. Some bags performed way differently than I expected them to, and some bags performed exactly how I wanted them to. But that's the whole point of testing objectively, is to find out exactly what the numbers would be for science. Now, it's a lot different than putting your bags down on your board and slowly lifting them up. There's a lot of different variables that could happen when testing bags that way. If you go up too quickly, if your boards are too tacky, so on and so forth. So we have an objective system that we can fall back onto to test the bags every time. And note one of the very interesting things about what we did is we also had the same level of humidity and the same temperature in the room that we were testing these bags in throughout the entire experiment. So next time we do this again, we can do the exact same thing. Get the room to that temperature and get the humidity to that level. Now, one of the other things that we tested with the bags was the way that they were filled and specifically how they feel in your hand. Now, this was the hardest test to do to come up with something objective to test all the different bags with. So what we ended up doing was getting five different bags and we filled them all with coffee, but the first bag being whole bean coffee and slowly going all the way with a grind to a very, very fine powder. So the very fine powder has a very squishy, malleable feel. The other side with whole bean coffee has kind of a crunchy, large pellet feel. So what we did is we would get each cornhole bag, we would feel it and test it against those different bags. Feel the cornhole bag, feel the coffee bags and move it through the scale until it was in between or close to one of those different uh, coffee bean filled bags. That way it would give us the best idea on some sort of scale what the fill of the bag is like. Now the last thing that we did was test the flexibility of the bags. Now it's important to note that the bags were mostly new so these bags aren't completely broken in yet so it'll give you an idea about what you're working with when you buy a new bag. What we did is we put a piece of metal and we had a scale that was an exact 90 degree angle spectrum and we put numbers in between those 90 degrees that would represent different flex ratings for the bag. We would split the bag exactly in half, so half pellets on one side, half pellets on the other, and lay it over the piece of metal to see where it slouched to. It was a really good test because we found out that some bags, they do have a lot more give than you think they will, and then some other bags, because of the stiffness of the fabric, they don't have as much flexibility as you think they might have. Now, once we collected all of our data, we had to compile it in some sort of easy and readable way. Now, what we did is we created a spreadsheet which shows the exact numbers and all the different readings that you can see there for the speeds of the bags, the flexibility, and so on and so forth. But we also wanted to have some sort of visual graphic to show you how the bags landed against each other on a grid. Now, we chose to go with a scatter chart for a lot of different reasons. But the main reason would be to show the disbursement of bags and what types of groupings those bags could be in. So as you see here, you have the slow side of the bag on the bottom and you have the fast side of the bag on the left hand side going vertically. Now the further a bag is to the right, the faster the slow side of the bag is. The higher up on the left side, that means that it is a faster bag on the fast side of a particular bag. Now, the color of a bag represents the flexibility and the fill rating. And so the colors go as follows. You've got a stiff bag, which was represented by the color red. You have a firm bag, which is orange. A moderate bag, which is yellow. You've got a comfortable bag, which is blue. A loose bag, which is a light green and then a floppy bag, which is a dark green. So your red bags are gonna be your very stiff, very rigid bags, and your floppy bags are going to be, um, you know, something that's a lot more malleable, something that's gonna flop around in your hand. 
very loose filling bag. And also on this chart, we added different groupings. Now these groupings are very important when choosing a bag that you want to play with. For this particular reason, the red circle represents the ideal fast bag. So the ranges of speeds in this red circle are bags that have a much higher end on both sides of the bag, but not too crazy. The yellow circle, that represents the bags that are moderate, so kind of an all-round good bag. Not too slow, not too fast, kind of that Goldilocks zone. The green circle represents the bags that are on the slower end of the spectrum, and those are the ideal slow bags, so not too slow, but a, a decent control bag for those guys who like to throw really fast straight shots and don't want the bag shooting off the board much those bags would be the ones for you. And then lastly, the blue circle represents bags with the highest range. So some bags may be super fast on one side and, and slower on the other. It's not bags that are so extreme that it's crazy, but it's bags that have a decent range to play with. And then of course, in the middle of all four of those circles, you've got the ideal Goldilocks zone. And there are really only two bags in that, but one of which of course is the Air Force One. It has a good rating for the comfort and it's just a great all-around bag. So it's really interesting just how the data played out so we could see everything on a grid, take a good look at it. Now guys, I know what you're thinking, don't worry. Not every single bag that's out there is on this chart. I would love to be able to do that. And so if you have plans in the future where you want your bag to be tested and put on this scale up against all the rest of the bags to know how your bags compare, you can let us know, you can reach out via email, you can send us a message on Facebook, however you want to do that. But we will be continuing to do this as we create this objective scale to measure how the bags work against each other and what bag is the best type of bag for you. If you want to check out the in-depth charts and the spreadsheets that we made with all this data, feel free to do so. Go check out the link below and it will take you to the page where we did a full write-up about the experiment so you can see every single detail, how stuff was done, and that way you can have your fill of all of your cornhole data. So if you want to know more, feel free to reach out, and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you here shortly with another episode.